Welcome everyone once again to Simply Painting. I'm Frank Clark, we're in China, we're about an hour's drive outside Beijing and I'm in the Golden Elephant Golf Complex. There are 36 holes here and due to the enormous increase of interest in golf in China, there are many such complexes being built. We're going to have a round of golf here this morning, have a look around, we might find something to paint, so let's get started. Well, we're coming up the 18th hole of this lovely golf course. And this is my third shot on this five par, which I hope will be my last shot. So let's see how we get on. Well, that's not too bad, is it? Thank you, yeah, excellent. Let's see if we can finish with a birdie. No! <laughs> Well, I finished with a birdie. I'm so happy. I enjoyed this wonderful golf course. You know, we have many golf courses in Ireland and maybe sometime you'll come to Ireland and join me for a game of golf there. But first, it's back to the studio and let's get started with our nice little painting. Well, you know, that golf course was fantastic. And a funny thing, I played three holes, as you saw. Do you know I went par, par, and birdie on the last one? Didn't do so well on the rest of them, I might tell you. But anyway, we had a look around to see what we're going to paint for you. And I thought there was a little stand of trees with some flowers beside the first tee. And they were beautiful. And I thought, that's what we'll do. We'll paint those. And that's what we're going to do for you. So before we do, let me tell you about the materials we're going to need to actually paint them. First of all, we have the brushes and we have the one and a half inch goat hair brush. And then we're going to put that into the water. Then we have the three quarter inch baby goat hair brush, half the size of the other one. And we have the small brush, which is the rigger. It's a nylon brush and it's got long hair. We have a sheet of watercolor paper. It's 14 by 10, but this time it's upright. So we're painting in portrait. Now, that, that does not mean I'm going to paint a face. It means that the paper's upright. It's in portrait. We have a tray with some colours out on it, which I'm going to tell you about now. We have five colours, which are raw sienna, alizarin crimson, lemon yellow, cobalt blue, and burnt umber. And we have some white here, just in case we're going to need it. We have some water in the bowl. We have some cloths. I'm all ready to go. First thing is, oh, we must draw the horizon line. This time it's a kind of a funny horizon line because it looks like this. So therefore, it'll be very safe to say it's not a horizon line at all, is it? That is the top of the bank. The flowers are here, the trees are going up there, and we're going to get started now. First thing is, let's pick the colours to paint the sky. And I'm going to do something very different this time. First of all, we're going to take some yellow and we're going to go right across there. Look, a big stripe of yellow right across, like that. And carry on up a bit. Mm. And then we're going to take some of the red, which is the alizarin crimson. It's probably the best colour for mixing because it's transparent. It'll mix very well with other colours. Look, and then I'm going to put that in there look, and go right up along with it. Take your time. You've got loads of time, loads of time right up to the very top with this. Now we have another colour we're going to put in there in a minute, but this will be the same. Now look, I'm going to also put a little few, just marks a red like that. Now the last colour is blue. And when I put the blue in, wait and see what will happen. It will turn purple, I promise you. See? So now we have three colours. We have 
the purple, which is over the top. And I think that's a lovely colour. Look at that. Oh, yes. Put that in there and get the old hair dryer out and give this a good bash. Okay, that nice and dry now, so we're ready for action. And the next thing we're going to do is to put in the trees. Now the trees, in this case, there's one big one. So we get some burnt umber. There it is there, and we put, mix it with some of the uh, raw sienna. And we take the middle tree here, it's a big fella, and we go right up along. Look, I tell you what, let's get quicker at it. <laughs> If I do this, it's much faster. There you go, that's one tree. And then we have a smaller tree here. Don't make them all the same size. Now, to make him smaller, first thing you must do is put him further up the hill because it looks like it's further away from you then. Do you understand that? And then we have another one is, oh, let's see now, let's go D -D -D, right up here, a small one. And probably one more here. So there's four trees. Now don't worry, they haven't got branches and things on them yet, but we'll do that all. All will be done in time. So there's our four trees. Now we're going to have to fill in this area here. And to do that, we're back in, clean the brush. And the first, always work light to dark. So we take some of the blue, a big pile of the yellow, big pile, because look, that gives us nice green foliage, see it? And up at the top here, because that will be really, now we can work around these trees because we can put in the tree trunks again if they get covered, so don't worry. This is very much off the cuff, as they say. I, I, I have an idea what they were like, the, the flowers, and I'm just going to just fill these in a bit. Now we can put some of the raw sienna in. Don't have it all the same colour, you see, break it up. Nice and... Now where's that raw sienna gone? Now I'm using the small goat hair brush, but it's very dry. And because it's dry, you see, when I put it on the paper, it almost looks like I'm creating leaves and fern and all that kind of thing. Take your time with this. I'm working downwards. Do you know why? Well, one of the reasons is practical. That what will happen is, as I go down, the paint follows me down the page. And I'm just going to give that a little dry now, and you're going to go away and visit something else. It's going to be great fun. See you in a couple of minutes. Here's another little gem for you from Beijing. And I would consider this to be a feat of modern engineering. Well, this great stadium was built here in 2008 for the Olympic Games, where all the great athletes of the world gather to contest to be the best. Blood, sweat and tears, they say. The stadium holds 93,000 people seated and is in the shape of a bird's nest. That's why it's called the Bird's Nest Stadium. You will notice behind me there are guys on funny looking bicycles. They're motor driven. Well, they're called Segway bikes and they are the fastest growing sport in China. They race them.
they still open the stadium, of course, for great sporting events, for musical concerts where the great artists of the world come and sing and dance, and of course, for me. Uh, but now it's time to get back to our painting, so let's get back to the studio. Well, what a structure. Wasn't it incredible? I couldn't believe it. I'll tell you a little bit about it as well. One thing, and the first thing I tell you is, the cost of building that village was 40 billion. Not 40 million, 40 billion. It was the most expensive stadium ever built. But you could see it. Wasn't it fantastic? Oh, sure, look at it. Now, as I'm talking to you here, I'm dabbing away here quietly now. Yeah, just look. I should tell you uh, something else, <laughs> which is total, totally nothing whatsoever to do with what we're talking about. But in Hampshire, in England, in 1895, the first man was fined for exceeding the speed limit in a motor car. And you know what speed he was doing? Six miles an hour. He could walk quicker. But there you go. That's the English for you. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't going to let him away with it, so the poor man, I'm sure he was disraught. Now, I'm still carrying on down, you see that? And I want to, I hope to you this is looking like it's all broken foliage. And we always start light and then we get darker. The reason is that you can do that with watercolours, but you, if you go too dark, it's very hard to lighten them. And then we put a little, I'm going to get down, because we're getting down the bottom here, I'm just going to put a little bit more, see a little brown in here, see it? It's the burnt umber, yeah. Because we, the flowers need a bit of a background as well. That looks quite nice now, doesn't it? When we're right down here, then we'll have to go back up here and start at this again, but we're all right. It was a nice thing, that golf course was covered in all these lovely flowers, wasn't it? Yeah, hmm. Mm -hmm. I've got a little thing for you to try out later. I've got a little bet with you. And this is that you cannot fold a piece of paper more than seven times. A piece of paper. Get any size you like, don't care. It can be this size, that size. And try folding it more than seven times. I could be wrong, of course, couldn't I? Have the kids help you. Or if you had the kids watching, you try it. Get a piece of paper and try it. Now, I'm, I'm getting very near the bottom of this now. I'm also getting very near the bottom of my yellow paint, so I probably have to put out some more. Don't ever be mean with paint. The meanest people in the world with paint, without any doubt, are artists. And if you have a friend, an artist, or if you go to an art class, and you ask the person beside you for some paint, have a look at their faces. You'd think you would, they were asking them for the moon, as they say. Same people would buy you dinner, no problem. But a paper to paint, as we call it, a farthing's worth of paint. Oh no, no way. Now put some red in here, see it? Looking quite nice now, isn't it? At least say yes to you and me. And I hope you're trying this. I really, really hope. Because if you don't, you'll never, you'll never know. There's an old, old saying that says, the greatest artist never painted a picture. And the greatest motorcyclist never raced a race. Do you know why? They never tried. Because how do you know what? Everybody has a talent. The thing about, particularly with painting, anybody can do it. Anybody. All you need is that desire that I keep talking about. Now I'm putting in a few little, see, little twigs. Because we've got to make these trees look. Now I'm assuming that the paint, that's the bright side, so therefore this is the dark side. Nice. Well, if it isn't, we'll fix it, don't worry. We'll make it nice. That might be not thick enough, yes. 
always wobble your brush and at the same time lift it off the paper and that will give you the effect of making it thinner. And you can go quicker if you like. Now we're going to put some leaves in these, of course, eventually, so don't be afraid. And kind of join one to the other sort of thing as well. Don't be, uh, don't make them symmetric, you know, they're, they're not. Great thing about nature is it's never the same. No, 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 no. And then it's going to pull that down there. Because we're just doing the, 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 the dark side of the things. And when we finish this then, we're going to go very quick few more of these. And then we'll be getting on our flowers, won't we? Oh, yes, we'll have to do that next. Well, I've got to leave you now and send you off on another little journey. And no laughing. <laughs> I'm only starting. And you'll see what I mean when you get there. <laughs> see you in a few minutes. Well, I'm in the grounds of the University of Art in Beijing and there are some people behind me here who are performing a type of Tai Chi. It's an exercise that the Chinese do. It's a very gentle exercise. Well, that seems to have completed my workout for the day. So now it's time for us to get back to the studio and back to the picture. <laughs> yes, no remarks about it now. I'm only starting. And it was so exhilarating. I was jaded when I finished it. And they were there dancing away. But you know what was wrong? They were all out of step except me. They were all going in a different direction. I don't know what they were trying to do. Tell me, I, I was perfect. I know it. <laughs> Says he. Oh yes, I know what you're saying to that. Now look, I'm just keeping going here. More. I haven't got around to the little flowers and things yet, so don't worry though. It will be done. It will be done. Now we darken those eventually. We have all our little things and we put in the the leaves on the trees, we leave that to last. Now what I'm going to do is back to the, this brush again and I'm going to put in some kind of dark colour here and there because I want something to put my flowers on. As well as that I also want to hide the bottom of those trees, you see the way? Because where they come out of the, the ground like that, they should be a shadow. <laughs> now let's see, ah, okay, just, it's a good idea to now and again kind of lean back and have a look where you're going here because by leaning back, you see, like I'm doing here, uh, it gives me time to assess. Well, I think that's pretty good now. I'm going to do one or two more really dark ones, maybe just one there because I'm going to put some nice bright flowers in there and one there. All right. Now, white gouache, white gouache. This is the white paint, and this is what we're going to make up our nice flowers with. So first of all, I'll leave that there a moment, and the next thing is, I should give this a tiny little dry, so just give me a second. All right. Okay, now we're ready for the, so let's make up some nice pink flowers first. And how do you make pink? Well, you take some of that pink, that alizarin crimson and you mix it with this other stuff here and lo and behold, look what you get. Lovely pink flowers, watch. See? Maybe even a little, a little whiter than that. Really nice, ah, there we go, look at that, look, look at that. Very really nice, hmm. Pink flowers, pink petals. I was asked to do a thing one time by a certain friend of mine, Mr. Hayden, and he asked me to paint pink, pink petals on the piano. And I said, what is he talking about? He wanted me to paint these petals that were reflecting on a piano. Mm. 
uh, it didn't work out very well, I can tell you what. Now look at that, now we got some more down here. All I'm doing is mixing some of the white with the pink, that's all. The more white, the brighter it is. And we, we put in some other flowers now as well, because there was kind of all kinds of lovely flowers here, wasn't there? Yeah. Now as you go up here, they must get smaller. Why is that? Why would they be smaller up here than they are down here? I can hear you saying it, because they're further away, isn't that right? Yes, good for you. Look at that now. Now we're going to do some yellow ones. And for that we're going to need some yellow paint. So let's squeeze that out. They probably do some white ones as well. We do a couple of yellow ones first though. Let's get a bit of yellow. Having fun here. As he searched, or, oh, I tell you what, we need to put a center in those. A little blue center, yeah. Nice. I mean, you can, be, you can put in more than me. You don't have to do exactly what I do, and you don't have to work as quickly. A couple of white ones here and there. These could be little daisies or something, couldn't they? Yeah, it was it. See the way I'm pulling the brush away from each one of them, yeah. Now, if you're doing white ones, please try and put them on something that's dark, because otherwise you won't see them. I'm looking around now to see, oh, that's very nice. I put some nice yellow in the middle of that. And I also put nice yellow on my, wasn't that good of me to drop the brush on my shirt? It's a good job I had a shirt that's a little colourful, isn't it? This is not a colourful shirt, though, is it now? Okay, I think we're nearly now. We're nearly ready to get the trees now. I think we're so. Let's make up the color for the trees. Let's see how we're going. <laughs> Here's one for you. You know the X. It's marked down as a kiss. You know, dear Margaret, love you. Kiss, 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 kiss. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, in the reason for this is that in olden days. When people were illiterate, in other words, they couldn't write very well, they used to sign their name with an X, didn't they? Yes. And then they would kiss the paper, which was a sign that they meant what they said. And that became why X stood for a kiss. That's what you didn't know now, I bet you. Oh, you get somebody out there saying, yes, I did, I knew it all the time, my grandmother told me. Well, maybe they did, but... Or maybe she did, but I'm telling you, that's the reason. Now look, as I'm talking to you here, I'm doing these uh, trees. Difficult, isn't it? Look, once you take it easy and do the thing, it's very simple. This painting is, is the easiest thing you ever do, and very, very therapeutic. You know, here's a fact for you that you might not know. If you had a headache, simple, just a headache, and you started to paint, I put in some dark, slightly darker colour, do you know what had happened? The headache would go away because the headache is usually in the other side of your head. That's absolutely true now. You're probably thinking that's a load of rubbish, but it isn't. No. How does it begin to look? Isn't this beginning to look grand? Grand, he says. I find a fine paint now. You know, the, they always say when you get towards the end of a painting, that's what happens. You start to... Ah, uh, now. Now, dab, 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 dab. Now, our next move is we've got to put in Joe the Bird. And Joe the Bird goes up here somewhere. I don't care. If it doesn't matter. Stick him in. And then the last thing we do is we're going to sign this. And then we take our little mount and we put it on it. And at the same time, we say to you, that's all for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to learn any more about this or any of my programs, please visit my website, simplypainting.com. From Frank Clark to you, goodbye.